Hello everybody. On this video, we're going to talk about project 7, uh, which is called the potentiometer, our first analog experiment. I'm also going to be telling you some other codes and some other, some other stuff for you to be using and do some different projects with the potentiometer. So these projects are in the book that I, I have been telling you about, which is called the getting started with the TIMSP430 launchpad of Adrian Fernandez and Dong Deng. So first I want to start talking about what is the difference between digital and analog signals? Well, digital is pretty much when they are giving you just two options uh, like high or low, on or off, or zeros and ones. We have actually already seen this a lot with our MSP430 whenever we use the digital read per read and function of energy. Uh, it, has all, uh, it always used to read just ones or zeros, which is the same as high or low. And analog, it's high or low and everything in between. So that's the big difference. Uh, it gives you a lot of different options. So a good example of this will be just for you to just for to help you to visualize it. It will be the TV channels. Uh, I don't know if you uh, the digital channels. If you, if you remember, you you if you can see it, you pretty much you can watch it like real cool real pretty high definition and uh, that's a how a digital channel you see it but if you can't you just you just don't see it a lot uh, at all it's not like a middle point uh, otherwise like the the analog channels the old ones uh, you could see it really good sometimes you couldn't see it and sometimes you just see it blurry or uh, in, with some interference or something but there was middle points not like, like the digital, the digital channels, you just see them or you just can't see them. All right, so let's talk about what we're gonna be using for this experiment. So we're gonna be using the MSP430, a breadboard, three jumper cables, and a 10K potentiometer. So what is a potentiometer? A potentiometer is a specialized resistor that can have a variable resistance. I don't know if you remember on the last project we were using a resistor and the, the purpose of a resistor is to actually con control the current of electricity going through it. Uh, the more resistance, the, the less electricity going through and each resistor ha have a specific resistance. Well, the, in this case, the potentiometers, uh, you, can, you can actually control uh, how much resistance do you want. Uh, and this specific potentiometer has a resistance from 0 ohms to 10,000 ohms because it's a 10,000 potentiometer. All right, so to set up the hardware, what do we need to do? Well, if you have the 1.3 version or older of the MSP430, which I don't think you have, uh, but you might, you need to put two jumper cables on these two pins, uh, crossing them. Uh, and that should be enough. But if you have the version 1.4 or newer, which is right now the last one I believe is the 1.5, you don't have to do anything at all. So now let's set it up. As you can see, we have the materials that we need to use here, the breadboard, three jumper cables, the MSP430, and the potentiometer. So the potentiometer has three pins, as you can see here, the left one, the middle one, and the right one. Pretty much you can connect it wherever you want, just the jumper cables need to be on the same lines as the pin, as the pins. So the VCC jumper cable needs to be connected here, and the other end needs to be connected on the left, on the same line as the left pin of the potentiometer. Then the the potentiometer of the middle needs to be connected to whichever pin we want to use. So let's say you're gonna use a pin 1.4 as a picture. That's fine. And the last, last one needs to be connected uh, to the on the same line as the right pin of the potentiometer and the other end needs to be on the ground. All right, so let me show you how it looks once it should look like this. All right, so what is this code gonna be doing? Let me show you. So this is the code on an area. We set it up and we upload it to the launch pad. And what is gonna happen 
Just give it a moment. It should turn the the red LED on or off. There you go. So what is this code doing? Pretty much what it's doing, it's turning the potentiometer into a button. If I move the potentiometer into the right, it turns the LED on. And if I move it to the left, it turns it off. Right? But if you can see, it's exactly at some point, which is the middle one. I can go all the way to the right and it's going to be still on. Like this guy. And if I go to the left, if I will only go to the left, it's going to be still off. So it's on the middle. At some point is where it turns off and it turns on. Alright. Another thing of this code, which is pretty, pretty, pretty cool, I believe, is that this is going to be the first time that we're actually going to be sending a message back to the computer. What do I mean by a message? Just look at this. So the computer is actually reading what is going on with the MSP430. It's not just the code and that's all. No, uh, now they're actually talking between. So right now it's reading zero as you can see. And that is because the potentiometer is all the way to the left. So we, if I move it all the way to the right, it's going to give me a reading of 1023. So if I put it in the middle, it will be approximately 1512, something around there. Mm -hmm. So depending on of how the potentiometer is positioned, is going to be the reading that it is giving us. So what is happening is uh, the digital read, I don't know if you remember, it reads zeros and ones. Well, the analog reading of the MSP430 instead of 01 is from 0 all the way to 1023. Uh, and on the digital signals, the 0 is equal to 0 volts and 1 equal to 3 volts. While on the analog signals, 0 is equal to 0 volts uh, and 1023 is equal to 3 volts. And uh, the ones in between, well, you can do the math like 512 will be the same thing as 1.5 volts. So depending on how much do we move the potentiometer is what it's going to be reading. Right, so let's try to understand the code. So here we're just setting up on the first line of the code, we're just setting up a constant, which is telling us that LED pin is going to be the same as saying 2, which is the red LED. And if you don't remember that, let me show you why. 2 is the same thing as red LED. So if we put a 0, or P1.0, or 2, it will be the same thing. All right. So I also want to tell you right now that we have the picture right here that on the MSP430, we have some pins that are analog pins, uh, which are the ones in blue. Not all the pins are analog, just these ones in blue. And one good thing about the analog pins is that they can actually read analog signals and that on the code that we do, we don't actually need to set them up as an input or as an output. I don't know if you remember on the last on the last on the last codes on the last projects, we used to, on the setup we used to put pin mode, then the, whichever pin we were using and set it up as an input. For the analog pins, like as I am saying here. We don't necessarily need to set them up as an input. We can, we can go, go ahead and put pin mode. Uh, the pin that we're using is a pin 1.4, which is the A4. Uh, we can go ahead and put it like A4 input, and it's going to be the same thing. There's not going to be any change. But I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of it because that, that's fine. So on the next part of the call, we go ahead and put the, the red LED as an output. Then, then don't put too much attention to the serial part. I'm going to tell you that at the end. Then we go into the loop. We set up analog value, the same thing as saying analog read. Analog read is a pre-written function that is already an energy for us to use. So analog read is just reading certain pin and what is happening at that with that pin. So the pin that we're using is a P1.4, which is the same thing as A4. So that one reads and it gives us a value from zero to 1023, like I already told you. So what is happening? If 
there's a reading above 512 on A4, uh, the LED is going to turn on. Else, so pretty much if it's below 512, it's going to turn off. Then we go into the part of serial. So serial, serial print or uh, serial begin. Serial begin is just to actually initialize the capability to send back the data. It's just to set it up, and you need to you need to put it like this: serial dot begin nine thousand and six hundred. Then you uh, at the end of the loop you put serial dot print, and in parentheses you actually put the the message what you want to what you want to see. And then at the end, serial dot print ln. You need to write it like that. We have two. We have two parts uh, inside the parentheses. The first one is actually what is going to be reading. So it's going to be reading the. Is, there's going to be an analog read on A4, which is same thing as analog value. So we're actually telling wh which pin to read. And DC is how we want to see the data. We can see in binary hexadecimal or decimal. So we wanted to see in decimal regular numbers like one, two, three, four, five. So that's why we put the C. So as you can see, here we have the we actually have the, the message, the potentiometer reading is equal. And then we have in decimal the, the values. Alright. So I hope you like it and I want you to think about all the possi possibilities that you can have with this uh, all the possibilities that it opens so just to be able to send back data that's really amazing uh, another thing if you if it's not working for some reason yeah don't just put a comment on my video or something and make sure that you're actually using the on this actually on the serial port the serial port that is actually the one that you're using most of the times it's gonna be the last one so I also want to show you another another code really fast uh, Go ahead and go to File, Examples, Analog, Analog Input, open it up. Uh, we're using A4, we're not using A0. And actually, this is wrong because on so 13, there's no LED. It's actually 14, the green one. So go ahead and upload it. And let's see what it does. So just give it a moment. So as you can see, if I put the poten the potentiometer all the way to the right, it's gonna start. It, it's it's gonna blink slower than if I put it all the way to the left. Actually, if I put it all the way to the left, it doesn't blink at all. But if I move it a little bit to the right, it starts blinking. But if I keep moving it to the right, it keeps blinking but slower. So why is that? Well, that is because as you can see here. The setup is the regular one as the uh, last as the code that we just saw. So here on the loop we have exactly the blinking code of the LEDs, the regular one, just to turn it on, keep it on how many how much time, and turn it off and keep it off how much time. Well, here the the important part is the delay. Inside of the delay of the delay, we have sensor value, which is a constant that is right here. Sensor value is the same thing as saying analog read of sensor pin, which is A4. So pretty much on delay, the, the time that we're going to be getting, it's pretty much the reading, the analog reading that we're going to be getting for pin number A4. So as remember, if I put all the way to the right, the reading that is going to be getting, it's a 1023. So it's going to be, it's going to pause that function for approximately one second. And if I move all the way to the left, it's going to be reading, getting a reading of, C, of zero, so it's not going to blink at all. It's just going to turn it on off, turn on off without pausing. So if I move a little, bit, a little more to the right, it's going to be 100 or 200, which is microseconds. So it's going to start blinking fast or slower, depending on how we move it. So just keep playing with the codes. Uh, try to understand that. And if, if you have any questions, just let me know and keep watching my videos and subscribe. Thank you, guys. Bye.